Uh, so next on the agenda is uh, quiz, uh, which Hans Martin Wedding from NPD will run for us, and it's concerning dry wells on the Norwegian shelf. So I'd ask you all to bring out your phones again and log on to Menti, and you should all know how that works by now. Also, one note uh, to remember, do not log out of the Menti after this dry well quiz, because we will also be asking some feedback on this conference from you in the same um, using the same code following on from this. So Hans Martin, floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Um, I think we'll just have to wait a little bit um, to um, um, allow people to uh, log on to Menti. And I guess, uh, is it you uh, that will be running, um, running the Menti for me? Uh, it's Matthias that runs it. Yeah. It's Matthias who runs it. OK, Matthias. So you you just uh, decides when we are ready to go, Matthias, and I'll uh, go through the questions and, uh, and answers. Yes, I think we will uh, at least get 100 people in So uh, before we start. So it's uh, 45 now. So the the program says it's a it's a quiz about dry wells. It's actually very hard to make a quiz about dry wells because nobody seems to agree on why the well was dry, and you have to go in a, a lot of detail to to actually say something about it. So it's a it's a bit more general quiz, but it will relate to wells and and to place uh, eventually. But the first couple of questions are sort of warm up questions that are should be fairly, fairly simple. It's going to be multiple choice, and I think it's going to be three choices per, per question. So your success rate from this, if you know absolutely nothing, should be 33%. If you just go by random guessing. So you should at least uh, get more than well over 33% if, if, if you will consider your own um, um, Actions good. Maybe we will start now as we have landed around uh, 72, 74 people. So um, yeah, that's about half half the people who. Yeah, Go but that doesn't seem to more people. It's not coming in, so um, I think we no, will start the quiz. Suddenly increased a lot now, so uh, <laughs> we give one more minute to people. And uh, everyone, just remember it's um, prize to the to the winner. So. Um, so, um, and it's also um, you get more points if you are uh, answering uh, very fast. So uh, of course you need to be have the correct answer, but you get also uh, more points for answering fast. Okay, it's um, around 80. So I think we will start now. So be ready now, for everyone, for uh, the first uh, question. Yeah. What is the current level of petroleum production, liquids and gas on the Norwegian shelf? So it's the, the, the total in oil equivalents. Surprising that uh, actually most people, not most people, but many people got this wrong. This is uh, what pays our salary. Uh, if you if you watch the presentation by the NPD, Sokkelora, you will maybe have an advantage here because some of these first questions uh, comes uh, you could you would know if you had watched that presentation. Okay, we can probably go on. Yes. 
Some some must have been very fast here. Question two. What is the total production liquids and gas to date from the Norwegian shelf? So that means from the first oil on uh, Ecofisk and, and uh, to the end of this year. Yeah, that's that's better. Uh, actually, that was shown on a slide that was uh, showed shown uh, in the introduction of the conference to, uh, yesterday. So that's probably why quite uh, many of you have had picked up that number. So let's go to the leaderboard. OK, so it's. Agent X9 and then Tulbjörn two times. So what was the technical success rate among the 31 Wildcat wells completed on the shelf last year? Once again, the, uh, the answer was it's very high. It's 58%. So that probably um, tricked many of you. Um, uh, what more can we say here? Uh, again, this you could have seen this from the presentation by the by the MPD earlier this year. OK, so there's a big change in the leaderboard. Daniel, Ulava, and LB, who was the fastest on, on this one. So that's interesting. So we'll go on with uh, more success rates. What is the all-time technical success rate on the Norwegian shelf? So there has been. 1188 wildcats that has been completed uh, since we started the uh, exploration in Norway. Last year, 58%. Again, it's surprisingly high, it's 46%. Remember, we're talking technical success rate here. So only 21 got that right. Let's uh, have a look at the leaderboard again. Daniel still on top, Swish and Agent X9. Yeah, so some of the same names. Okay, let's go on. So this question is, which area on the Norwegian shelf has the highest technical success rate? Is it the North Sea, the Norwegian Sea, or the Barents Sea? Yeah, that was um, again a bit of a surprise, but actually the Norwegian Sea. Um, has an all-time success rate of 48%. The North Sea has 45, and the Barents Sea has 46. So it's just, they are very similar, but it's actually the Norwegian Sea that has the highest uh, success rate. And that also goes uh, for the last five years. It's They are also on top there. So a final one on, on success rate will follow the after the leaderboard. OK, Daniel is uh, pulling ahead. And then it's Swish and a new name here, Henning. Very good. So 
So this will be the, the last on, on uh, success rates. And now the question is, which area has the highest commercial success rate of the three areas on the Norwegian shelf? Yes, and that is the North Sea. Um, that's perhaps not surprising because in the North Sea, even fairly small discoveries can be quite uh, uh, profitable because of all the infrastructure. So you all more or less all got that one right. On the leaderboard. Yeah, we still have uh, Daniel, Swish and Henning on top three. But there are others trailing quite uh, closely. And now there's going to be questions that are a bit more related to geology and place. So. Um, let's see. So which of these proven place have the longest streak of dry wells? Is it the Upper Cretaceous chalk? in the central graben, the Rotligen sandstone in the central graben, or the upper Jurassic sandstone in the Tampenspur. Yeah, a bit surprising perhaps, but uh, the Rotligen is play. Many of you thought that it hasn't been too great, but uh, the Romeo discovery by Equinor uh, a couple of, or a few years ago, is actually in the Rotligen uh, so the, the correct answer, the Upper Cretaceous Chalk uh, has had 10 um, dry wells in a row. And the last significant discovery came 35 wells ago, and that was Tomeliton Alpha, which was in 1978, and it was Equinor's first operated discovery on the Norwegian shelf. So since then, it's been pretty bad, we must say. And then uh, leaderboard. Now we can expect perhaps some uh, some changes here. No, Tanya, Swish, Henning still on on top. And now we are up for the last of the questions. And it's going to be a similar question to the one you had, but this time it's about unproven plays. Which of these unproven plays? has the most wells testing it, and obviously then unsuccessful wells. It's the lower to middle Jurassic in the Helgeland Basin, Paleocene in the Horda platform and Songgraben, or is it the Rotligenes in the Southern North Sea outside of Central Graben? And it's actually the Rotligenes outside of Central Graben. This play has been tested 23 times. Uh, Tested with tested, I mean that it has had an expiration target. The well has had an expiration target that has been reached. Uh, it doesn't have to be a primary target, uh, but it, it has been. It's not just the penetration of the formation. It's it's a, a mapped expiration target. So 23 times we tried this play and it hasn't worked. I can also say that the lower to middle Jurassic in the Helgeland Basin has been uh, tried out 10 times without success. And the Paleocene uh, in the Horda platform in Songgraben has had nine tests and checking a bit more thoroughly, there is actually one of those wells who has been classified as, as a discovery, but uh, I think it's uh, insignificant amounts in the list of formation, so it's, it's rated as a uh, unproven play. So that was uh, the final question. Let's now see who gets the big prize. And it's Daniel, who was at the top for quite some time, but it was quite close in the end. 
So I think uh, Hermo Kies must have uh, done a good job in the in the latest questions because uh, he claimed climbed up he or she climbed up to third place and Swish remained at uh, second place. So applause. <laughs> So that was all for uh, from me and the NPD. Very good, thank you. That's an interesting uh, little quiz there. That busted uh, quite a few of us <laughs> on simple stuff. So Daniel, if you can please write your email in the chat, that'd be perfect because there is actually a prize for you. So then we're on to um, sort of a summary uh, session and feedback session. Um, I see there's. Uh, a lot of you that actually did log out of Menti, so maybe you could log back in. I see we're still more than 150 participants, um, so it would be nice if we could get feedback from quite a few of you. So please log back in using the same codes on Menti. We will use that just to get immediate feedback uh, right away. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that. And while you're logging on, um, it's worth mentioning that uh, we should send a thank you to Cecil Linse for, for helping us set up Menti um, to use. It's quite a neat tool to um, do a bit of fun stuff and it's also very useful for feedback. So we've got about 40 people who have signed in, as far as I can see. Um, good to have a few more of you, if we can. Or maybe we should just start. And I'm assuming now it's, it's 40 plus of those most keen to give some feedback. Matthias, are you there to run it? Yes, I can start it now. Yep. OK, so the first question is, what was the best part of the conference or the seminar? And you can type in, I guess it is a word or a sentence. No, it's actually a multiple choice. Yeah. Sorry, you skipped one uh, question there, Matthias. Yeah, sorry, I was a bit confused by myself here. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't be. I'm not sure people can go back to um, to the previous question now. You see on my phone at least it was. Um... Oh, here we go. Excellent. I guess some of the keywords here are talks and quiz among them and the variety and talks. I think we had a very good variety this year. Um, interesting. Risking. Injectite presentation. 
that it was online and on Teams. Excellent. Discussions in the chat, yeah, fully agree to that. Fire degradation. Should we continue on to the next question? So how satisfied are you with the seminar in general? And that's a multiple choice one. Be relatively easy to answer. Good, and then next one. And how was the length of the talks given? Pretty unanimous so far. <laughs> Okay, we got more than 60 people responding, so I think let's just move on to the next one. Which topics would you like to be included in a future Android Explore Plus conference? Tectonics, yeah. Basement, quaternary, injectites. Fractured reservoirs. Dry well case studies. Mineral exploration. Climate. Migration. Shallow place. Sediment distribution. Lots of good suggestions. Very good. See if we can bump 60 response here as well. Good, and then let's move on to the next. And then we're quite keen to ask you what we could do better next time so that the conference can be even more interesting. So we've got physical meeting is sailing up here, more CCS, time planning with US presenters, point taken. Keep it to one day. A social event, obviously, if it was physical, it would have been a social event. 
more Norwegian based and focused talks, less research comparisons with analogs. More case studies, that's coming up quite a few times here. Backups for dropouts, better networking opportunities, yeah. But I'd also like to keep it on Teams. Push presenters to show more in their case studies. Okay, yeah. It's a clear um, wish from everyone that uh, would like to see it be a physical meeting, and I think we agree to that. Offshore shale place, that's an interesting one. Good, let's keep on going to the next question. And how do you feel a digital format works for this conference? And you partly answered that in the last one, I suppose, but. Do you still feel a digital format is pretty good? Uh, good? Let's do the next one. Would you prefer a digital or physical conference in the future? So I suppose there are pros and cons to to both. Um, what we've seen this time around is that we can have a lot more participants than we could have if it was a physical conference. So this is um, something we should consider moving forward uh, and maybe do a hybrid or combine the two, perhaps. Very good. I think this was the last question. Is that right, um, Matthias? Yeah, okay, one more. How relevant is the underexplored seminar given the industry strategy where most companies are moving towards a near field exploration um, strategy? Excellent. So most people think it's still relevant and highly relevant. Some also see the opposite. OK, next. That was it. Thank you for participating in the feedback session. That helps us a lot in uh, over the next organizing committee to. To bring that with them in their work. Um, on behalf of the organizing committee, I'd like to thank you all for participating uh, in these two days, and I hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, a big thank you to all the presenters that have done a fantastic job. I think we've seen some very solid presentations. And um, of course, we can't leave without having an encore in this one, which is still our one keynote uh, talk that is outstanding with Alexei Milkov. And he will be on from a quarter past four today. So I hope a lot of you will come back to um, to see that talk. Uh, I don't think it should be missed. I think it will be a quite interesting one, how to deal with dry wells in a, in a more systematic format than uh, maybe what we have time for and, and do today in the industry as such. So thank you all and then uh, hope to see as many of you as possible in about 40 minutes from now. Thank you.